Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and returning guest Jordan. If you remember with Jordan, we've done a header install on his third gen 4Runner with a four cylinder engine. We did a third member swap and we did his rear axle seals on his non ABS rear end. And now today we're going to do a rear brake shoe replacement on his rig also. So we're gonna walk you through all the steps, whether you're doing this job on a third gen 4Runner, on a first gen Tacoma, maybe a Tundra, uh, maybe even an old T100. Now, brake shoes are different on many different vehicles, so this brake job is gonna be most specific for those vehicles I just mentioned, but if you have a different type of vehicle, watching this video will give you a clue of how you go about it. The tips we give you and the suggestions we give you will transfer to any brake job, but the way the springs go together and how everything mates up together is gonna to be a little different with every vehicle. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that this video will have value even though you don't have one of those specific vehicles that have this exact type of rear brake drum setup. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna show you the related factory service manual pages for the brake job and then we're gonna show you the parts and any special tools we're gonna to use for this job. So here's the area in the factory service manual we're using as a reference. We're in the BR pages, stands for brake. It shows you the full schematic of all the parts. What's interesting to note with this schematic is that it gives you references of where you should grease things. So with the black arrow, it shows use a lithium soap based glycol grease and that's mainly for the wheel cylinder. Most of what we're gonna be doing as we're gonna be lubricating the areas with the clear arrow, and there's many areas where the brake rubs on the backing plate on, on either shoe, three spots. There's also the adjuster right here. The adjuster should be lubricated for free and easy movement of the adjuster. And then there's another lubrication point at the bottom of the brake shoes, meet up, grease all the areas the factory service manual recommends when we put the new shoes back on to the vehicle. So that's the first page. So the, the ne next pages basically show how you disassemble everything. And this first one actually shows there's an access hole here where you can see the thickness of your shoes to let you know that, okay, so instead of having to pull the drums off, you could actually use that access hole to see how thick the brake shoe material is and let you know, hey, maybe I should replace the brake shoes. So that's what that's showing. And then it goes through the whole long list of all the steps of removing the spring so you can remove the shoes and get your new stuff back in. So that's all this stuff. And it does list steps that we're not necessarily going to do and that's mainly in regards to the bell crank. It talks about disassembling the bell crank and replacing the wheel cylinder. We're not going to mess with the bell crank on this job and we're not really going to mess with the wheel cylinder because Jordan already replaces wheel cylinders so he knows those are good. But it is something to consider if you want to renew your brakes completely and you want to have fresh wheel cylinders. This is something you could do if you wanted to do. We will mention that on the bell crank that an adjustment procedure, but we're not necessarily going to take it apart, but we'll mention how you would check the adjustment for the bell crank. And so these are more pages of measuring the distance and getting the, the brake shoes adjusted properly in relation to the drum. And then it shows about adjusting the bell crank on these pages right here. So we're using this as a reference and it talks about, you know, setting the parking brake and some other steps on the next page, measuring the, the distance of from shoe to shoe and then measuring the inner diameter. And basically you want the difference to be 0.5 millimeters. We don't have a big measuring caliper, so we're not necessarily gonna do this. And Jordan has his own method. He's gonna explain later on in the job of how he's gonna make sure that the brake shoes are adjusted properly the other pages we're going to use in the braking section talks about the parking brake lever on vehicle inspection and how to, what the proper adjustment is. So the proper adjustment for the parking brake for your rear brakes is that when you pull up the lever, if you get seven to nine clicks, your brakes are properly adjusted. So we're going to use this area of the factory service manual as a reference too to make sure that the brake shoes are properly adjusted by checking how many clicks the brake lever will go up after we're all done. And if it's still too much, then we'll make some adjustments. Now, Jordan being the smart guy that he is, chose to go with OEM Toyota brake shoes. 
we've heard on numerous occasions on Toyota forum threads that people have had better luck going OEM with brake shoes. We suggest going OEM. So here is the OEM brake shoes. And with this kit, it comes with these C-clips and the Toyota factory service manual does recommend to renew these. You don't reuse these C-clips because you actually bend them when you put them in place. And so once you take the old ones off, you have to bend them out and that fatigues the metal. And so that's why they suggest not to reuse these. So brake shoe kit came with new C-clips and then it also came with two Eclipse. Now, Toyota doesn't say that these are necessarily you have to replace, but since the brake shoe kit comes with it, yeah, we're gonna use the new ones. So we're gonna get rid of the old ones. So these are the Eclipse. Now let me show you some special tools that you could use on this job, but don't necessarily have to. You could use conventional tools like pliers and channel locks, but the special brake tools can help make this job a little bit easier because of the extra leverage they give you. Here's the part number for the shoes. You might be thinking, well, Timmy the Tool Man, you're just showing us shoes and a couple clips. What about the springs? Well, unless you are one of those sad souls that lives in the rust belts of the country where everything gets rusted to death, then maybe you buy a spring kit. We live in California where we're not dealing with the rust issues like other parts of the country. So these springs are built pretty beefy and don't necessarily have to be replaced. This is an area where you could save money. So unless your springs are really worn out from rust and then you think they're gonna break on you, then you can absolutely reuse the springs. You don't have to replace the springs every time you replace the brake shoes. So that's Here's some of the specialty tools I was mentioning. So I bought this kit from OTC via Amazon and it's an eight piece brake tool set. Now, some people won't buy a whole kit like this, but they'll buy a tool that looks similar to this and it will have an end like this to, to get the hold down spring. So it'll be like a multi-tool. So this is a tool that you can pick up like at Harbor Freight or like I said, online on Amazon for a pretty affordable price. So you don't necessarily have to buy a fancy kit in a molded case. You can find cheaper options that have a specialty tool that functions for more than one purpose. And then you have these adjustment spoons and this is to get in and adjust the brakes afterwards through the access hole, the backing plate. But you could use a screwdriver instead of this. This is a specialty tool that is kind of nice by the way it's shaped. It, you know, it's a little bit easier to use than a screwdriver. This is the specialty brake tools I'm going to be using. And then if you happen to want to replace your wheel cylinders, or maybe you're taking this opportunity to bleed your brakes at the same time, a flare nut wrench, 10 millimeter, is highly recommended. Uh, if you use an open end wrench, you run the risk of rounding off ends of the flare nut fitting. Always use a flare nut wrench on flare nut fittings. It's the best way to go to limit your chances of, of stripping a fitting. And that's all the specialty tools we're gonna use for this job, other than my cool DeWalt impact gun to remove the wheels. So, to prep your vehicle for this job, preferably have it on level ground. Chalk one of the front wheels fore and aft then jack up underneath the rear axle and support the rear axle on each side with six ton jack stands with the parking brake off. You can't have the parking brake on because we're working on the brakes. So preferably have this thing on level ground because you're gonna have the rear end jacked up without the brakes helping you hold the vehicle. So better to have it on level ground for this job. When you pull your drum off and you notice that your brakes are all covered in gear oil, there's two things that could be going on. Number one is that the breather that's on top of the differential, which lets the excess pressure bleed off out of the differential, that could be clogged. So unscrew the breather with an open end wrench and then blow through it or, or push some compressed air through it with an air compressor and see if it's still working. If it's still working, then that means one of your axle seals has failed. You could click on this link above and we go into great detail on how you do a rear axle seal job of all the little particulars. So we recommend you watch that and then you'll know what to do, whether you're gonna do the job yourself or you're gonna pay somebody to do it. You have to address the leaking axle seals first before you do your brakes because you're gonna be wasting your time. Your brakes are just gonna get coated in gear oil again. So address the axle seal leak first and then you can address renewing your brakes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two access plugs on the back of the backing plate of the brakes. We're on the passenger side. 
The first plug I'm gonna show you is this one right here. Now it blends in, so don't freak out if you don't find it. It's on the front edge. The front of the vehicle is this way. So this is the access rubber plug so you can see the thickness of your pads. Now you're not gonna be able to see this on the video, but when you look in this access hole, you can see the edge of the drum and you can see the pad and you could then see, okay, I have this much pad material left, I'm good to go or I don't have very much left and yeah, I should remove the drums and do a brake job. This is the first one that you'll use. The next one that you'll plug uses, this is the one you would take off to adjust the brakes for to get your final adjustment or this is where you can adjust the brakes so you can have an easier time getting the brake drums off if the pads are dragging on the drum a little bit by going through here with either a screwdriver or a specialty brake tool you can turn the uh, automatic adjuster loosen the brake pads and this way you can have an easier time getting the drums off when you're doing a rear brake job this part actually might be your hardest step because sometimes these brake drums are really locked on there they could be locked on for a couple reasons. One, the brake pads are just a little bit tight and they're causing friction to fight you to get the brake drum off the air axle. The other thing is, is that where the brake drum meets up with the axle face, it could kind of get rusted in place and fight you that way. There's three methods that will help you get the brake drum off. First is I'm gonna pound on this with a plastic mallet to break it free to where I can remove it with my hands. If that doesn't work, then my next step would be to go in through the back and turn the adjuster to loosen the brake shoes to where then I can hopefully get it off. The third method is I would get some bolts. Now these are an M8 size bolt with a 125 pitch, 1.25 pitch. And you can screw these into here and then these bolts will push against the axle face and draw the drum off. But I would use this as a last resort because Jordan from experience has said that if the brake shoes are really tight against the drum and you start cranking on these bolts to force the drum off, you bring the brake shoes with it and then you start bending stuff. So to prevent any damage to your brake parts, I would first again, like I said, pound on it first, which is what we're gonna do first. Second, go through the access hole and I'll describe that better from the front side because you can't see what I'm doing with a couple screwdrivers on the back but I'll show you what it would look like from the front once we get this off of what you're actually doing with the automatic adjuster then if that doesn't work your last resort because maybe this drum is kind of really rusted against the axle is then you grab these and you help force the drum off but that's the third and final step because you don't want to damage any of your brake parts by forcing this and breaking anything. You might have forgot to take your parking brake off. So before you start messing around with things and you can't get this thing free, double check that you actually released your parking brake because that obviously is going to keep you from getting this thing off. So an old adage we use in the fire service is try before you pry. So just like before you break down a door, first check to see if the door is actually locked. So <laughs> let's just pull on it and see if it comes off. And look at there, it comes right off. So no pounding necessary, it came off no problem. But if this thing was locked on and really tight, I would pound on it. I pound all around the edges to break, to break it free from the axle. And you'll know you're getting somewhere because you'll see a little movement in this drum. So you keep on pounding, you try with your hands, maybe it doesn't come, you pound some more. And if you can't get it with the hammer method, then I would go to the method of going through the back side access hole, turning the adjuster to loosen the brake shoes, and then try to pull it off. So there we go there, drums off. California, it's a lot easier. So this is the area that I was talking about where the, the brake drum could get really locked on. So the brake drum contacts the axle here, it contacts it here. So one of the steps we're gonna do for this brake job is when we're all done, is we're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize in this area so it's gonna limit the chance of the drum getting really welded on to this. Because these brake shoes only do 25% of your braking power, you don't have to change them that often. So the next time Jordan has to do this, it might be 100,000 miles. And over that 100,000 miles, maybe those drums got really locked on there. And so anything you could do to make the next brake job easier is a good method to use. We're now on the driver's side and 
This driver's side drum is harder. I'm getting a little bit of movement by pounding on it, but still it's kind of fighting me. Now I'm gonna actually show you the bolt method. So using the bolts you bought, wherever, Home Depot, wherever you get it, I'm putting a little bit of grease to grease the, the threads here. Just as a multi-purpose grease. And then you gotta find the threads. There are holes that are threaded. There's one right here. And it has one on the opposing side. So again, get some grease at the beginning of the threads here. And thread that in. The reason why they have opposing bolts is that you wanna draw them in equally so it pulls off the drum. Just on one side, it wouldn't work. It would get stuck. So these Home Depot bolts I got, they end up being a 13 millimeter head. Okay, so get these in there and start pulling them evenly. Get a little movement on one side, get a little movement on the other side. And I could see it right now, I don't know if you could pick this up on the video, but it's drawing the drum right off. Better camera angle, you can see it. So you can see this distance is getting less and less. So give it a few turns on each side, keep on taking it off as evenly as possible. If this thing is really fighting you, a lot of force to, to remove the drum, then you know something's wrong. The brakes are, brake shoes are dragging really bad and maybe you haven't adjusted the brake shoes, loosened them enough for this method to work. So keep on moving it. Now this has moved enough to where I think I could pull this off with my hand. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Still fighting me a little bit, but I got it off. So. You can see right here how the, the bolts are going through the drum and then they're contacting the axle face right here to draw the drum off. So this is a technique that could work for you. If the drum is really rusted onto this axle face, you can get it off with this bolt method. This is that access hole that I was first showing you to where you can look in from the back side of the backing plate and you can see the thickness that you currently have on your pads. But we're gonna pan back now where I'm gonna show you that maybe this isn't necessarily an absolute sign of how well your brakes are doing because we're seeing some uneven wear on the front side of the pads a little bit lower. So we'll pan back now. Look at the wear on the lower part of the front pad. This is on the passenger side. See how much thinner it is here as compared to up here. And we've noticed that this is the same pad wear on the driver's side. The front pad seems to wear a little bit more on the bottom. So looking through that access hole is not necessarily letting you know how much meat you have left on your brake shoes. It might actually be better just to pull the drums to get a better assessment of where your pads are at. To explain how you adjust the brakes on the back side, to either tighten or loosen. I have this small little shorty tool that came with the kit. You could use a small screwdriver, just anything with a flat edge that you can get on this adjuster right here from the back side. So I'm going in from the back side and on this passenger side brake, this is your automatic adjuster, okay? And the automatic adjuster is made such a way that it only allows you to tighten it. So I'm turning this wheel upward. So if I was looking from the backside, the wheel is going up and away from me, okay? Now, if you wanna actually loosen it, if I tried to loosen this now without pushing this auto adjuster away, it hangs up. So I'm cranking on it and the thing is stopping me. It won't let me turn it. So what you have to do is get in with a second tool and a skinny screwdriver is a good tool and you have to push from that access hole with the tip of your screwdriver and pull that away. And now with this pulled away, now I could turn the wheel down with either a screwdriver or another specialty tool and I could turn it downward. So that's what you have to do. So I'll show it from the rear now. You come in with the screwdriver and you hit this tab and push it away. At the same time, you gotta get your other tool in there and turn the wheel. So it can be a little bit hard from where I'm at now. If you get the screwdriver on the passenger side access hole, if you get it in the most forward spot, so basically against the, the edge of the oblong hole, that's a perfect spot to get the screwdriver in to hit this tab. And then you can get your screwdriver or other specialty brake tool and turn the adjuster downward this direction. 
that direction and that's loosening the brakes. So this is how if you're having a hard time getting your brake drums off, you come in with a small screwdriver, push the auto adjuster away and then turn it downward. And that's loosening the brake shoes. So on the driver's side, it's exactly the same as the passenger side. If you get your screwdriver against the forward most part of the oblong access hole and go straight in, like kind of like in a downward direction, not straight ahead. Straight ahead will hit the actual adjuster rod. You have to go down between the spring and the auto adjuster to hit the tab to push it. It's all the way forward and a little bit downward to get under the auto adjuster and above the spring. And once you're in that spot, You'll be able to feel with the screwdriver that you're hitting that auto adjuster because you'll get a little spring pressure fighting you. And then, then you'll know when you're in the right spot to get in there with another screwdriver tool to adjust the brakes to get the, the drums off easier. What you do is you take the access plug off off the backside and you turn one way. Whatever way that the wheel will turn, that is tightening and you have to go the opposite direction. If you're wondering how this auto adjuster plate works, if I move the parking brake lever, it's gonna move and then grab the wheel. If it moves enough, if there's enough play in the brake shoes between the brake shoes and the drum to auto adjust, if it moves enough, it's gonna move enough to a click and then bring the wheel down. And that's how your brakes stay in the correct adjustment by using the parking brake. So if there's excessive distance between the shoes and the drum, by operating the parking brake, it's gonna maybe be able to go up a click or two and then come down and it's going to keep on adjusting so that's actually a way you can dial in your brakes and we'll show that later on where you pull the parking brake lever over and over again and it's going to adjust this like so so that's how your brakes get adjusted every click that's tightening the brakes it's pushing this adjuster outward to give you less distance between the shoe and the drum now the reason why we're showing you this from the front and not the back is because from the back we can't really show you you're kind of blind in the back, You're, it's hard to look through that access hole, so that's why we're letting you know in advance of where to put the screwdriver and how to angle it to where you can get on that auto adjuster plate. You'll know you're on the wheel. It's pretty easy to fill that wheel because you'll feel the little gears and your, your screwdriver or special tool will contact that gear and you'll feel it. So a lot of this is kind of by feel because it's hard to really get a good look inside there. Okay, here's a tip that's usually a good practice. Anytime you're doing something for the first time, it's a lot of different little pieces and parts. It's good to take a picture. So either with your smartphone or a camera, take some pictures from different angles of all the areas to give you an idea if you forget how the springs go together and these little parts that it'll, it'll give you a reminder. Another thing is only take apart one side at a time. The other side is gonna give you a reference. So tear apart one side and then leave the other side alone. So when you're putting things back together, if you don't remember, you could look at your pictures, but you could also look at the opposing side and say, okay, now I remember how that spring connects to the brake shoes or how that little clip goes. So keep one side intact as a template and then just work on one side at a time. As you take the brakes apart, lay them on a piece of cardboard or on the ground how they are oriented on the truck. So if I take the front shoe off, I'm gonna put it down uh, in the front location. I take a spring off, I'm gonna hook it back to the shoe I just took off. And you basically put everything down on the ground like you took it off, so it gives you another visual reminder of how everything goes back together. So as you take parts off, lay them on the ground and lay them in the orientation that you took them off. Now before you get started, if this has been a long time since you've had your brake drums off, this is just gonna be coated with brake dust. And so in order to have a cleaner working environment, clean the whole area off with brake cleaner first, get a catch basin underneath here to, to catch the runoff and just clean it up really good. So now when you're working on the stuff, you don't have dust flying and you're breathing it in. So just clean it really good by spraying this down with brake cleaner and you're gonna see all this dust and black crud coming down. So just clean it off really good so you have a nice, clean parts to work on, all right? So to relieve tension off the spring, I'm just gonna move this auto adjuster all the way in so it's gonna be easier to get the springs off because they'll have less tension on them. So you just push your this adjusting plate out of the way like I'm doing from the back side that I showed you earlier, and I'm just gonna screw this all the way in to where now the shoes don't have as much tension on them. 
And once that's bottomed out, I'll stop. And that's bottomed out, so I can't adjust it anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna use the specialty tool to get this return spring off first. If you don't have a specialty tool, you can grab with a pair of pliers and grab somewhere here and pull outward to get the hook spring to clear the pad. But you're gonna see how nicely these tools do it easier. You're gonna lose a grip on this unless you have a really good Gorilla Grip or maybe you use vice grips. So we're gonna hook the spring in here and then slide it in. So this tip of the tool is gonna dig into the pad and it's, it's actually gonna dig in so much it's not gonna give you as much leverage. So use a piece of metal, maybe a, a, a thick washer, something that's gonna not allow the tip to dig into the pad. So I'm just using this little adjuster tool as a little backing plate to, to press against. You squeeze in the tool and you kind of lever it this way and you can get the spring to clear like so. And now the return spring is loose from the back shoe. The next step that the factory service manual says is take this rear shoe off. So again, we're on the passenger side. We have this hold down spring tool. If you didn't have one of these, you can just grab a needle nose pliers and basically there's a pin that goes through these metal cups and in between the metal cups is the, the hold down spring. So you just have to turn it 90 degrees in order to get the pin to go through the cups. So if you see here on either side of this pin, there's a little slot here. So basically you're pushing in the spring, turning the whole thing 90 degrees one way or the other to where now the pin's gonna fit through those slots and it will, it will remove the spring in these little cup plates. Push in and turn it. Maybe put your finger on the back side because the pin goes through the backing plate to make sure it doesn't turn. And then turn it a little bit to where the holes line up. There we go. So now the pin slid through. So this is your little cup on the front. You take the spring off. You pull the pin out the back side. Just remember the pin goes from the back, then the first cup, spring, and the second cup. So now I'm gonna pull the rear shoe off and there's a spring down here. And once you pull it out, it's, there's not gonna be any tension on it. You could just unhook it. I'm gonna put this shoe to give me the orientation to where it went on the truck. So I'm gonna leave that there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this auto adjuster out. So I'm just taking this part of the auto adjuster out and I'm gonna again put it on the ground in the orientation that it was. Now the next thing we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the rear shoe is we're gonna compress this spring, turn it and get the hold down spring off of the front shoe. Once you take that tension off, things are gonna to wanna to start dropping on you. So hang on to things so the parts don't go flying. Get the pin out, your spring and your two plates there. And then now this rear shoe is gonna come out. So it's gonna come out with some additional parts connected to it. So this spring came out with the front shoe dropped down, but this is the orientation you can see that it has a cutout in here for the adjuster wheel of the adjuster to move. So this is the orientation. So I'm gonna put that down right here. And then now I'm gonna rotate this out. So just again, be real careful to pay attention how things are coming apart. So the brake shoe goes behind this. I'm gonna rotate this out. And there, here's your anchor spring. So I'm gonna put the anchor spring down right here. This is the way it goes. And then you look over here this is where this parking brake cable hooks on the bell crank lever. So I'm gonna lift this off. So now that's free. So, so now this whole front shoe assembly is free. We have the automatic adjuster plate, the parking brake lever, the parking brake cable, all still attached to this front shoe. So now we need to get these parts free of the old shoe and swap them over to the new shoe. There's that E-clip that we have to take off first to get this off. And then behind that is the C-clip that's gonna free the parking brake lever from the shoe. So we got to get those two free to get those parts off and then get them onto the new shoe. So we've got the front shoe, the old one with all of the hardware connected and our new one here. And this is the adjuster with the star gear that Tim talked about. So what we're going to do while we have it on the bench is move all this stuff over to the new one and lubricate the correct points. So the first thing is right here, 
There's an E-clip. You can see that. Thank you, Tim, for the little screwdriver. So we'll pop this E-clip off. And we have a new one, but we'll set it aside just in case. So there's also a little hold down spring here. So we'll we'll grab the pliers and take it off. You can see it, it connects into this back hole. And you can see there's two different ends of this spring and the part that, that sticks down further is what goes onto the shoe. And the other side clips onto this part. So going back to our orientation, and we'll, we'll go ahead and put the spring back in so that we remember where it goes. Now here is the other foot of the adjuster and we can go ahead and just wipe it off. Note that there's a pin here. The pin faces upward because it interacts with this lever. You can certainly clean these parts off with brake cleaner if you want, if they need it. These parts were not really very dirty, so I'm just opting to just wipe them off. As we get to this main lever, this is the horseshoe clip. This is the one-time use part that basically gets deformed. Toyota calls this the sea washer. It's often referred to as a horseshoe clip, but essentially it is a one-time use part that deforms around this slot. So we have to pry this thing back apart. I like to stick two screwdrivers in there, maybe. Or sometimes if you get one right in the center, you can start to get it apart. And you can be mean to this thing because you've got a new one. So now we're just gonna get medieval with it and just pry it off. <laughs> it's pretty strong. So I gave up and went to the vise here. Kinda needed an extra set of hands. Basically the idea is to get two screwdrivers to pry against each other. There we go. Now it's pretty well off. And you should be able to pull it out. There we go. Yeah, so put it in a vise if you have one. But the idea is get two screwdrivers in between there and push it apart. Okay, so we just got this C-clip horseshoe clip off. So now this whole lever pulls off. Here's a comparison between the old shoe and the new shoe. The uneven wear, you can see how on the old shoe, this edge here is down to maybe three or four millimeters. Still very serviceable, but we decided to change it anyway. So you can see the difference in the wear between the two pads. On the right is the old brake shoe, and on the left is the new brake shoe. Now we're done with the old one, but what you need to do is match this in your set of shoes with the one that has the pin facing in the same orientation. So good uh, standard practice here is also to, to match up the parts. You can set these here and make sure that everything looks exactly the same. So now we're confident that we've got the right new parts. Now note that on each side of the axle, you should have one shoe that has a pin and a corresponding shoe that looks the same, but without the pin. So you can see the difference there. So we're gonna focus on this one with the pin and reassemble all of our hardware now. So first thing, because this is basically a pivot and lots of things are sliding on it, we're gonna put a little bit of grease on here. This is just bearing grease. That's really all that's necessary to keep things happy in there. So here is the first pivot, and this is the parking brake lever. After the parking brake lever, we are gonna put on a new horseshoe clip, C-clip. We'll slip it on there, and then we have to take some pliers and basically deform the ends. And after I do it, I'll show you more closely how it looks. You wanna squeeze it together till the ends touch. So now it's solidly on there. So we're gonna apply a little more grease because we have the automatic adjusting lever on, which goes on there. Now we have a new E-clip, and this new E-clip rides in this top slot. And it's easiest really with just a pair of needle nose pliers, snap it in place. So to use the needle nose plier to, to get these on, what I did is put one edge of the plier against the back side of the post and the other edge on the clip itself to force it onto the slot. The next thing is we need to put this guy on. This is one end of the adjuster. One thing I forgot to do is we need to clean the end out here and put some grease in it. So I like to just 
shove a rag down into it. Factory service manual recommends high temperature grease here. If you're using some kind of brake grease, it'll work perfectly fine. This is just a synthetic bearing grease. Works well too. So if we just put it in there. The pin is gonna go in there so it'll slop the grease around where it needs to go. Now we need to put this part in here. You can put the E-clip on and you still have enough slack to get this part of the adjuster in. Now the other thing is we want to lubricate the end of this adjuster as well. You can actually see these shiny parts. So there's some sliding surfaces. I'm going to put a little grease just on the inside of this and a little bit on the pin for good measure. You can see the brake shoe itself here and the parking brake lever they contact this part. So we're going to slip it into here and then capture the pin with the automatic adjusting lever. So you can see how it all goes there. Now we can put the spring onto the automatic adjusting lever. Recall the short, the short end goes into here. The long end goes into the brake shoe. You can do this by hand. There we go. Now this end is all reassembled. We're going to put the cable that connects to the bell crank. This end with the hex stopper goes in here. We want to clean up and lubricate the adjusting thread. So this is a little cup on the adjuster. We're going to clean this off and re-grease it. The next thing is we're just going to clean the adjuster off. What I prefer to do is actually to take the threads all the way off and clean the threads and apply some fresh grease because you want these threads to be, be able to operate very smoothly so that your self-adjustment works well. Now we're just going to apply some grease to the threads. Work it all in there with your finger. It doesn't need to be over greased. There, and screw it all the way back in. Because when you start to assemble the brake components, you're going to want the adjuster all the way bottomed out. We're going to apply just a little bit of grease to this cup, inside and outside. Pop it on there, and for good measure, a little grease on this part. And recall, this is the part that plugs into the other fork that's already on the brake shoe. So now this guy is ready to go. So let's note that this little cup here. The flat part goes up against the star, and the cup actually goes on like this. So now we're at the part where we're going to start putting the brakes back together. One of the things we have to do is we have to compress those wheel cylinder pistons back in. And when you push the wheel cylinder pistons back in to, to make room for the new shoes, you're going to be pushing fluid back through the system and it's going to end up going into your reservoir. Now if your reservoir it was all the way topped off to the max like as your brakes wear your pistons on the calipers and your pistons on the wheel cylinders and the back brakes are going to expand more so your level is going to drop. Now for some reason if you topped off the fluid because you thought you were low now when you push those pistons back in you might actually overflow this and max it out. So a good technique to do is grab a small syringe like a 10 cc syringe or whatever you have and draw some of the fluid out to lower the level especially if you're currently at the max level because when we squeeze those pistons on the wheel cylinders in it's going to fill this thing up a little higher but since Jordan doesn't have his all the way to the max mark we have a little bit of room to be able to compress those pistons in to where it's not going to overflow this reservoir. So these are the pistons that I'm talking about with the wheel cylinder. So I'm going to push these in with my hand. They're not usually that hard. So you're basically giving yourself extra room because the new pads are going to be thicker than your old pads. So you have to have these pistons compressed in pretty far to where the new pads are going to fit in to where the drum will go over, even with the adjuster all the way bottomed out. Push these in with your hand to where they're all the way pressed in to start off before you start putting your parts back together. So on every side of the brake system, we're going to lubricate five points. One, we're going to lubricate where the brake shoe is going to hit the piston. Then there's three points on the backing plate that the pads will rub. You can see the wear marks. One's here, one's there, one's there. And then finally, there's a part where the lower part of the shoe is going to rub on this little surface right here. So that's the fifth spot we're going to lubricate with the grease that Jordan brought. And then we're going to lubricate the same spots on the other side right here 
the three backing plate spots, and then the piston again. So those are the, all the places we're gonna lubricate before getting the shoes on. I'm putting a little bit in there. I'm putting some on the backing plate area here. Not a whole lot, but enough. And then on this blower part here. And then the same on the other side. Now that we've greased all the friction points for the brake shoes, now we're gonna get the brake shoes back on. We're gonna reverse our procedure. So the front shoe was the last one we took off. So it's gonna be the first one we put on. Again, this is the passenger side. I want to show you, because you can't get this return spring in after you get the shoe on first, but I want to show you where it's supposed to hook. Because you might think it hooks here, but it's supposed to hook in this shaped hole right here. So it's going to come in from the back side and hook there, and then go in like that. So you can really know the accurate part where it's supposed to anchor the shoe. So we're going to get the shoe in first. So I'm going to put this edge of the front shoe into the piston and then lay the shoe against the backing plate. Then I'm gonna go on the back side with my pin and then I'm gonna put it through the hole so it sticks through the pad right here. And I'm gonna be kind of holding the pin with my finger and then my other finger's holding the shoe. And then I'm gonna get my first cup convex side faces towards you so the, it has a, the nub that sticks out. And then get your spring and then you have to get the other plate. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Get the other plate on there, and then get your either needle nose pliers or special tool and capture the whole thing. Compress it in, turn it to where now the pin is in the right slot. So you have the open spots here and you have the little, little cupped areas where the thing sits. So now that pad is in its rightful place. Jordan, being the smart guy that he is, you know, with the experience wrenching on things, he said that you can get these kind of like carpenter's clamps. You can hold the pad in place. So it basically gives you a third hand. It's a little bit hard to get the cups on the spring and then get it compressed all at the same time, holding the pin and holding the shoe against the backing plate. So if you either have a buddy or you have one of these uh, like carpenter's clamps, then this is a nice thing to use so you can hold everything steady while you're getting that spring in place. The parking brake cable came off while we were putting the shoe on. So again, you hook the hex part on the adjustment lever and then the cable goes underneath this, see this slotted area? It goes through here and then it hooks on the bell crank lever. So you just pull on it a little bit and hook it just like so. So now you see how the cable runs through that channel and hooks the bell crank. The next thing we're gonna put, just kinda hook it on there right now, is the anchor spring. So the hook faces away from you, so hook it in, and then it goes behind right here. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna get our return spring in place. And remember where I showed you that the return spring on this end is gonna hook right here on the front shoe. So I'm gonna go in behind and hook the spring in there. You fit it behind and make sure it's hooking right in this area. So now you got the return spring in the proper area. So see how the spring has this opening here? So make sure that the opening of the spring matches up where the star wheel is gonna fit. So this is, will let you know if you happen to put these parts on the ground and can't remember how they go together, this gap in the spring is for the star wheel to fit in. So now we're gonna get our adjuster wheel back in pull the adjuster plate out of the way and seat it all the way to where now this part of the adjustment lever is hitting the, the star part of the adjuster wheel. We're ready to get the rear shoe on. So we're gonna hook the anchor spring on the rear shoe. We're gonna get the anchor spring behind this plate and now we're gonna rotate the shoe into place and it's gonna go into this piston on the other side. Now we're gonna get the other anchor spring and pin all set up. Again, I'm gonna go in through the back side with the pin. And this side's gonna be a little easier because now you have something kind of holding in place. Again, you put the, the first cup with the convex side facing you. Next comes the spring. 
and then you put the other plate with the concave side facing you, you get your special tool or your needle nose pliers, you put it on there, compress it, turn it 90 degrees. Make sure that the pin is being captured properly by the front cup and then now you have this rear shoe securely attached to the backing plate. Two more spots that we haven't greased yet is we're going to grease the inside where the auto adjuster rides. And then we're just going to grease the opposing side a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to pick this up and we're going to push the pad, the rear pad into here. With the pistons kind of pushed in by hand pressure, the adjuster is pretty much almost seated in there. We could use a carpenter's clamp to hold this in easier and we might end up going to that. But right now, things are kind of staying together. So now we have to get the return spring in place. And this might be your hardest part of the job because this spring is pretty stiff because that return spring has to hold a lot of pressure. So basically a very strong spring. So you have to pull it enough to get it in that hole. So if you have the specialty tools, it's a little bit easier. If you don't have the specialty tools, vice grips, channel locks, maybe a good set of needle nose pliers would be enough grip to hold onto it and pull it and get it in its resting place. Okay, so with the specialty tool with the hook, I'm gonna hook the spring hook. And now this thing again is gonna be putting a lot of pressure and I don't wanna damage the new pads. So I'm gonna put something in here that's going to protect it like this little adjuster plate that I used before. So this is could be a common error. So this hole is really close to the hole you want to use. So it's not the round hole that you want the return spring connected to the rear shoe. It's the other hole below it. And it's a little bit of a further stretch. So you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to go to this one because it's easier. So if you get it hooked a little bit here, and then you might want to get a screwdriver to try to push it in a little bit deeper. So now you could release the spring or your spring tool and then maybe push this in and get it all the way in. So a combination of this special tool and a screwdriver might be necessary to finally get that hook on the rear shoe in the right place. So now the brakes are correctly assembled. So with these drum brakes, just like with the rotor, it's usually good when you're putting new brake shoes on to put a new surface on this. So basically you take it to a machine shop or auto shop and they take a little bit of material off to make a perfectly smooth surface to mate up with your new pads. Another thing you can do is just buy some new drums. Sometimes if you've actually resurfaced these like a few times, there's not enough material left to resurface it. So you're forced to renew it. So you have two choices, either get them resurfaced or you just buy new ones or aftermarket ones. We like to keep the OEM ones and Jordan, since it's his truck and it's within his right to do whatever he wants, he's not gonna resurface these and he's not gonna buy new drums. What he's gonna do is just take a little bit of fine sandpaper and clean it up just a little bit and then call it good. So it's up to you whether or not you wanna replace the drums or resurface them, but we usually gonna recommend resurfacing them or just buying new ones. Now let's go into pretend land. Let's pretend this is the large caliper measuring tool. I don't own one, Jordan doesn't own one. But what you'd wanna do for the adjustment is you'd wanna measure this distance from the furthest most point, measure there to there, and then figure, okay, it's this much. And now you uh, measure the inside of your drum diameter. With the caliper tool, you measure the inner diameter. So you measure opposing sides and you measure that diameter. And what you want is a 0.5 millimeter difference. So this width right here of uh, edge to edge of the brake drum, inside diameter of the brake drum, should be 0.5 millimeters larger than this measurement. So that's basically giving you the right amount of distance between the shoes and the inside of the brake drum. And that's supposedly your accurate adjustment, 0.5 millimeter difference. But Jordan has a different way of doing it. 
He's basically gonna fit the drum on, see how loose it is, and then he's gonna adjust the star wheel until the drum just barely slides on there, kind of a little bit tight. And then we're gonna do the fine adjustments by pulling the parking brake over and over again, and that should set it by the adjuster wheel turning, like I mentioned earlier, pulling the parking brake level over and over again is gonna do that fine adjustment for you, because every time the adjuster wheel is able to turn at least one tooth, it's gonna tighten it just a little bit more to where when you pull the parking brake, it's not gonna be able to even turn one tooth and then your brakes are adjusted correctly. So this is another good reason to actually have a working parking brake because the parking brake by using it every day is actually keeping your rear brakes properly adjusted. Okay, so here's the old drum. What I did was I just scuffed it up with a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper. Not very much, just enough to kind of take off a bit of the glaze. So we're gonna hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner We'll hit the pad surfaces with a little bit of brake cleaner too. If you look at the pad since we've worked on it, we've gotten our greasy paws all over everything. So we don't want to undo all of the greasing we've done, but just spray a little bit on the pad surface to dissolve any of the oils that got left over from your project. Make sure everything is Nice and happy. Okay, slip our drum on there. And it goes on there nice and easy. So to adjust it further, it's easy to just lever against the wheel cylinder. Don't go too far, because it's easier to go forward than backwards. Okay. So basically we're gonna keep adjusting it until the drum becomes just a little bit difficult to slip on. It, it's a trial and error. So, got a little more to go. And then we'll let the parking brake do the fine adjustment at the end. As we adjust this, it's pushing the brake shoes further out. You can tell you're getting close when the drum will only go on perfectly straight. The other thing that this is doing is it's, there's all these little sliding components and it's helping everything find happy center. Almost there. Now I can actually feel it dragging a little bit. There, I'm gonna call that good. This is just, it's just barely going on. And there's just a little bit of drag. In fact, that might even be a little too much. I'm gonna back it off, I think, a click or two, and let the parking brake find center instead. Yeah. So since the wear on both sides was about the same, we can use this as kind of a starting point when we adjust the other side. So now we've got all this side all together and the preliminary adjustment completed by hand. We're gonna do the other side and then let the parking brake do the final adjustment for us. The factory service manual shows that the proper adjustment for this bell crank is when you pull back on this, there should be 0.4 to 0.8 millimeters, so barely anything, but you want a little bit of play. So if I pull back on this, I basically can get a little bit of movement of that stud away from the backing plate. And that tells me that it's not too tight. So if I can pull it to where 
I'm pulling tension on it and it moves a little bit and the clears the stud clears the backing plate by 0.5 millimeters or a little bit more you're probably right in there so we're not gonna mess with this because I could tell it's moving away about that much so it's probably adjusted correctly and we're not gonna mess with it when we're testing the brakes before we put the wheels on and we're adjusting it with the parking brake putting a couple lug nuts on there so that the brake drums don't move on us so here's the step that we're going to be doing the fine adjustment of his rear brake shoe adjustment using the parking brake so the factory service manual says when the brakes are properly adjusted you're going to get seven to nine clicks and so a preliminary check of this jordan found that that thing is pulling way more than that so he's going to basically pull the parking brake over and over again to get the brakes adjusted better. So go ahead, Jordan. So you can actually just hold the button down if you want. You can hear the clicks. You could actually audibly hear the adjusters in the back working. Yeah, I can feel it actually getting firmer and I can check too. Yeah, my pedal feel is also coming back too. Yeah. When I first got in it, the brake pedal was pretty soft. Now that the adjustment slack is being taken up, the pedal is firmer. It's much more like how it should be. When you're pulling that parking brake lever, obviously if you just like grab a, like a big strong gorilla, you can get more than seven to nine clicks, but you just would apply the parking brake like you normally would when you come to a stop wherever you're going. So under normal pressure, if you could pull it up seven to nine clicks, that's the proper adjustment that the factory service manual is talking about. So once you get there, the next thing you do is you get your tires on, you get your lug nuts torqued to 85 foot pounds, you drop the vehicle to the ground, and then please take it for a test drive. Don't just assume that your brakes are working properly. First take it on surface streets that you're driving really slow, like 25 miles an hour, preferably where little kids aren't playing and do a couple brake checks and you want to make sure that the brakes are braking evenly it's not pulling left or right and you've got good brake pedal feel and it's stopping good so good brake power not pulling left or right and the pedal feels good if you did the parking brake adjustment correctly and didn't use too much force you should be able to still pull these drums off. So we got the seven to nine clicks that the factory service manual recommends with the lever, but we're still able to pull these drums off, no problem. So the key is, is that only pull the parking brake lever with the normal amount of pressure. If you over pull it and really put a lot of pressure into it, you might get the brakes a little tighter than they should be. And now you're gonna get a lot of brake drag in the rear shoes with the drum. So just use normal pressure and then that should get your brakes adjusted properly. So we're done with this job. You get the wheels back on, you get your wheel lug nuts torqued to 85 foot pounds, and then you go take it for a test drive and like I said earlier, you just want to make sure that when you brake, that it's not pulling left or right, that it's, it's braking evenly. Like actually do a brake check where you're just like kind of hovering your hands on the other side of the wheel and see if it wants to pull one way or the other. So a very light touch or actually no touch at all, but just be ready to grab it if it starts to pull. You want to check for that. You want to check for the pedal feel that if it feels normal to you. And then you want to check that the braking power is really good, like it was before. If all three of those things are happening, not pulling, good brake pedal feel and good brake power, then you're good to go. You've done the job right. Another thing that's an optional thing after this job is maybe you bleed the brakes. Maybe it's been a long time since you renewed the brake fluid. We have a brake bleed video. You could click on the link above. It shows you everything in regards to bleeding the brakes. And then you're good to go. You've now renewed your rear brake shoes on your third gen Toyota 4Runner or maybe you have a first gen Tacoma. We thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Take care. Bye bye.